Okay, so today we have with us uh, James Prescott, who is a writer, blogger, and author from Sutton near London in the UK. He blogs regularly at jamesprescott.co.uk, uh, where he explores what it means to be divinely human and how we can discover divine hope in a broken and messy world. So welcome, James. I'm glad to have you here. Hi. Yeah, it's <laughs> good to be here. Thank you. Yes. So you have uh, an amazing book on your also uh, wonderfully new de newly designed blog. Uh, yes. uh, <laughs> it looks really good. Love it. Thank you. Uh, so your your manifesto is it's called Five Steps to Encouragement, um, which you are actually uh, I've read it through and it, I'm just I'm amazed. It's just really usually when I read encourage encouragement books. Um, uh, it doesn't stick with me, but your book stuck with me because uh, there's it's so full of uh, wisdom and like gold nuggets. I guess is the best way that I can describe it. And very, huh? and it's very simple to read and yet profound. And so uh, I just I just love it. Um, but so so oh, you're welcome. Yeah. So you you're giving away that book along with. A companion book called Reflections yep. on Encouragement. That's right, yeah. Yes. So this is when people subscribe to your blog? Yeah, that's that, right, yeah. Yeah. And put your name at the top of my, when you go to my blog, there's a kind of um, thing at the top uh, which tells you to put your name and email in a box and just click another box and then those, but those two books will be sent to you, PDF versions of those two books will be sent to you for free, um, as well as some other other material that I've got and other exclusive stuff um, in future as well, and also news about stuff that I'm doing, um, my book releases and other writing projects and stuff, um, and MP3 stuff and all this kind of thing. So um, it doesn't um, it doesn't commit you to anything. Uh, it just means that you'll get loads of free stuff, basically, and get updated whenever I post a blog. That's pretty much it. So, um, yeah, I'm giving those away free. Yes, no, that's wonderful. Well, and I've, you know, the, you have a whole bunch of guest bloggers, and when you post, James, I love it when you post. Uh, you just have, you have such a neat way of looking at life and about, you know, our humanness, and um, mm. and they're always encouraging, you know, no matter what the, you know, uh, um, topic is and so yeah you know, I would encourage I would highly encourage uh, anyone who's listening to sign up uh, for your blog uh, they you. yes uh, so uh, I'm just so glad that you're here and uh, um, I wanted after reading your book I just I really wanted to ask you about your story and how <laughs> encouragement often the things we write about are things that um, we've felt in our own life. So I guess I wanted to know how encouragement played a part in your story. You, you do mention in your book that when you were younger, many times uh, you needed encouragement and maybe sometimes you, didn't, you felt like you didn't get what you needed and that there were moments when you felt like you weren't good enough, that mm -hmm. some, somehow actions and words of others affected you in a negative way. Could you talk more about that and maybe, you know, just what people said or did that made you feel that way? Yeah, sure. Um, when I was, yeah, I, I'm. Well, one of my love languages is words of encouragement. Um, and so, when I was a teenager, um, I got bullied at school. I'm quite, I'm quite sensitive, quite um, shy, um, quite introverted. So um, it was very easy for people to bully me verbally, abuse me, basically. And, um, you know, he used to get my pencil case and open it and throw it around the classroom and hide my gym clothes while I was in the shower, that kind of thing. And I didn't really get very many positive messages from the people around me. And when you're that age, especially, um, words of encouragement, are well, whatever words you hear are really, really important, you know, whether they're positive or negative. Yes. I didn't get very many positive ones. Um, I got the occasional positive line from my parents but most of the time my parents were kind of in the middle of a difficult breakup so they didn't really have much time to encourage me um, I've got little bits of little bits of encouragement from them from my dad um, in, in relation to my writing 
um, he wasn't so good at writing. And when I was about 12 years old, um, he asked me to help him with the writing he had to do for a newsletter, which went out to about 500 people. You know, and I was like 12 years old, and he knew that my spelling, my grammar, and my writing was better than his. So he wanted me to check what he'd done. And that was a kind of big act of faith from, from him. Yes. In me. Yeah, that's great. A lot of confidence in my ability to write. Yeah. Um, so, and here I am, you know. Um, so... Um, that encouragement did make a difference to me. I didn't get much of it, but what I did get did make a difference. That's that is really good. Yeah, I mean that's so neat when parents, uh, you know, it's it's like, I don't know, it it really makes a difference when we're younger when parents, you know, do something that encourages us in our gifts. I guess, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. Maybe. So. Um, you know, so as, you know, as we all do, we are affected by uh, different forms of media, which you also talk about uh, mm -hmm. in, in, your, in your book. And we are bombarded by, you know, fear and negative images. And sometimes this affects us to the point that we, lo that we can lose sight of who we are and who we can be. And also, uh, everyone likes to share their opinions and some, sometimes putting others down in the process. So, with all of this going on, what do you believe is the one quality that we desperately need to recapture? What's the secret that has the potential to change the world and really help people in a real way? How do you define loaded question? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, seriously. Um, well, it's encouragement, obviously. I mean, encouragement is something I'm really passionate about. As you know, I mean, I've written two books about it, so um, <laughs> that says it all, really. Um, actually, it's quite funny because I, I didn't when I was trying I I was thinking trying to think of ideas to write books, and I couldn't think of anything basically, and and people kept on telling me that I had a gift of encouragement, you know, like without me prompting them at all, and I kept people coming up to me saying I I, I was really I'm a really good encourager, and you've got a really good gift of encouragement, you know, you should write about encouragement, you know, and it was kind of like oh okay. And so I, that's when I came up with the idea, really. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized how important it is and how important it's been in my life. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, encouragement has, does, I mean, we talk about changing the world, you know, it's kind of, it's a, it's a well-known phrase, um, like, well, you can change the world, you know, like, and it's, um, this is kind of, this changes the world. Encouragement changes the world, but not in a kind of. Yes, it's more like paying it forward. Yes. Like you do something, you say, like you, like you can say something to somebody which is encouraging to them. You may never know the impact it has on them. Yes. You may know the outcome of that. Um, and may, they may not even realise what you said encouraged them, but mm -hmm. encouragement has an effect on our subconscious as well as our conscious self. And um, it creates ripples because when you when you start to become the person that you were meant to be because of somebody's encouragement, that impacts on somebody else's life. And when you encourage somebody else, they start to become the person they are meant to be, and that impacts other people. So it creates ripples, like throwing a stone on a pond. Yes. You know? um, and like you know, out in the ocean, it's like all these big tidal waves. They always start off as like one little breath of wind like this little ripple in the middle of the ocean yes. and it just builds up right you know so um, what can start as one little ripple can build up into something really powerful so encouragement really does change the world because it we all need to be encouraged yes we do even if our love language mm -hmm. isn't words of encouragement we all need words of encouragement because especially I mean like as a writer for example right if a hundred people say give me feedback on my book and 99 people say it was great wonderful brilliant loved it brilliant and then another person then one person says I hate it. it's rubbish you should never have written this you should give up writing this kind of thing which one is on which one am I going to remember you know it's yes. always you know well out of a hundred words that we hear encourage uh, uh, comments on whatever we do we always remember the negative ones more than we remember the positive ones. It's just human nature. So we need as many positive ones as we can get. And we need to learn how to filter out the negative stuff. Mm -hmm. 
truth about ourselves. And encouragement is about telling the truth, as we're going to talk about, I think, later on. Yes. No, so that that is so true. Uh, I like what you how you say. That's almost like that, that movie. I, th I, I saw it a while back, but uh, like you said, pay it forward. I mean, that's just so true. That's really what, because encouragement isn't, I think you say that in your book, it isn't about us. It's actually about others. It's about showing others who they can be, as well as revealing who they are and giving them really the confidence to change, right? So, yeah. so how, how has um, encouragement in your own life uh, shown you who you can be, you know, your identity and giving you the confidence to change? Um, I don't know. Maybe there's a story that you can share with that, or I don't know. Um, yeah, uh, well, it's, yeah, I mean, it's... Obviously, there's the story of my dad when I was younger, which kind of is the start of the, start of the writing journey. Um, but more recently, um, little things have, have changed me. I did this course called the Tribe Writers course. Yes. Um, some people might have heard of. Um, that challenged me to change, to step out of my comfort zone. Um, and the guy who started that course I knew him just about a year for about a year before that course started and um, we talked a bit about my writing and he was really encouraging to me about my writing and my blogging and challenging me to step forward and step out and write books and grow my blog and be more professional and that all had an impact on me so I started writing a book and um, this year I had a I just had a moment, which I, I blogged about it recently, um, a moment where, which I call a Neo moment, actually, because it's from the, it's from the Matrix. Um, <laughs> that's one of my I favorite. like that. That's great. Um, Neo, um, the main character, he's told he's the one from almost the beginning of the film. And he does all this training, and he starts to kind of believe it in his head. Um, but he doesn't. He doesn't really believe it. He's just trying to convince himself that he's the one. And he goes and sees the um, the oracle, and kind of, she says, "Oh, you already know what I'm going to say." And he says, "What? Well, I'm not the one." So because he doesn't actually believe it. Yeah. He goes out and does the things that he's meant that he's kind of meant to be doing. That he's got the ability to be doing. That he's called to do. Yes. You know, and suddenly he doesn't need anyone to tell him anymore. He just knows. Yeah. Um, he has that moment where suddenly he's completely different and he doesn't need to convince himself anymore because he just knows who he's meant to be. And I had a moment like this this year. Um, I was working on my book, which my first full-length book, which is coming out later in 2014. Um, and I was writing a chapter about my mum's death. Yes. Um, literally, I just started writing, and and, and as, as I got into it, I kind of lost track of time. I, it was literally just me and me and the computer screen. I didn't, wasn't even looking at the keyboard. You know, I was just like things were just going from my head straight into the onto the computer. It's like, you know, um, through my hands. That's, <laughs> that's great. And I just I lost track of time, and uh, I didn't even notice my phone going off at all. I just, just was completely oblivious to everything, and. I, eventually I finished uh, and it felt like it had just been like 20 minutes, half an hour, whatever and I sat down and I looked at my watch and it had been like nearly three hours, you know, and I thought, what the, f you know, like, I can't believe this, you know. <laughs> yeah, I've not even noticed, yeah, not even noticed the time and then I had kind of an epiphany, um, I kind of, like Neo's kind of moment, I had that moment and Suddenly I knew what I was meant to do. I knew what I was created to do. I knew what I'd been called to do. And that was to write and to publish books and to write blogs and that kind of thing. And I just knew that's what I was meant to do. I didn't need anyone to convince me anymore, you know. Um, oh, I love that. And the, what Jeff had said to me and what my dad had said to me was kind of, it became real to me, you know. In that moment, it suddenly I didn't need that. All of that encouragement was kind of affirmed, you know. Yeah. I wouldn't have felt. I wouldn't have actually got to that place without the encouragement. And I still need encouragement now. Yes. But I need encouragement to convince me that 
I'm a writer, I just need encouragement to keep going. Um, and accountability and all that different kind of encouragement now. But I wouldn't have got to that place without the encouragement that I'd had before. Yes. Is I wouldn't have been writing that book if I hadn't had the encouragement from my dad and from Jeff. Yes. And, um, to, uh, to, to write the book. So encouragement got me to the place where I discovered my identity. Um, that's how important it is. And, yeah, and that was a, an amazing, amazing experience to me. Yeah. Oh, that's, that is, that's really neat. Um, I mean, it's, it's just so great how, you know, all these little ripples in a person's life, right? It's like this golden thread, you know, that takes us up to finding out who we really are, takes us to that point, right, of discovery. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, since encouragement is such a big part in helping others to reach their, their potential, um, and, and for them to see and accept them, themselves for who they are right now, uh, and to also see beyond maybe who they are right now to who they could be, um, yeah. it, I mean, it's so important. So from, from, yeah. from your experience and, and, you know, things that you have gone through, how can a person see themselves beyond the voices that others, and, and sometimes the voices that they tell themselves, uh, of fear and intimidation and, and insecurity, voices that say they're not good enough. Uh, how can people get beyond that, do you think? Well, I, I think you need to start with the truth. And, and it's about, in my experience, if I had known, if my identity, I put my identity when I was a kid in, like, how, how successful I was or how much I achieved or, or how impressive I was or how much better I was than other people or whatever. And what people need to be told, and this is from a young age, they need to be, they need to have their, their, their value and their worth as a person affirmed. Yes. You know? Like, as in, they, as in, you have inherent value and worth as you are right now. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what you achieve or whether you succeed or you fail or you make mistakes or you, you know, you have inherent worth and value as you are. Yes. And if someone can believe that about themselves, because that's the truth about everybody. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what God says about everybody. That you have that you know, that you have infinite value and worth as you are. Even if you're messed up, broken, made mistakes, you know, never achieved anything in your life, um, you you still have infinite worth to me as much as anybody else. And we need to believe that about ourselves. Yes. We start there, then it's much easier to dismiss the things which contradict that. And obviously, the world isn't like that. You know, we get negative messages fed to us from when we're young, a lot of people. But what we need to do then is to, uh, is to try and speak truth into people's lives, which is what encouragement is. And telling people that they have this value and worth. Mm -hmm. In themselves, not for what yeah. they, not for what they achieve, but for who, just for, just for being them. Yeah. And we need to also see who they can be, and and speak that truth into their life as well. Yes, very important. But saying yeah, and, and that can be in a positive and a neg or a negative. We're going to talk about um, the constructive criticism stuff in a minute, I think, but. Certainly, in a positive way, it's saying you have the ability to do this. I believe in you. You can do this. Yes. And it's like giving them the opportunity to do it, like my dad did with me when I was twelve, with the writing. Um, or it's just pointing them towards that in that direction. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and that's and and trying to show people and trying to get people to try and filter out their negative voices because we'll always get negative voices speaking into our life. We just have to learn to filter them out. And I'm, I'm, I'm not very good at this because I'm quite sensitive, so the, the negative stuff still annoys me, you know. But um, we have to... We, we, can, we can learn over time to filter out the negativity. Yes. And, and just take what is, what is true. Yeah. Said. And that's where encouragement comes in. And, you know, the truth, as we'll see, the truth is sometimes it's... It's it's affirming. It's positive. It's it, it's nice. It's, it's it's good to hear. Sometimes it's difficult to hear, but it's the truth. And yes. It's, 
that's what's really important. Yes. That we truth about ourselves and we believe that. Yeah. No, that's that's really good. Um, I, you know, I just you've done that so well, James. Uh, you just you're just so gifted that way. And it's something that we can all learn, though, right? Is to encourage people to to discover their identity, right? Yes, that encouragement is a gift that you have to cultivate. It's yes. not something you can just suddenly switch on. You have to discipline yourself to learn how to do it. To learn but how one, to do it. But once you do, it becomes a habit. Yes. Like I, I now seem to find myself come people coming up to me saying thanks for that encouragement, that kind of thing. I didn't even realize that I was encouraging them because it's just a habit. Um. Sometimes I have to be intentional about it, you know, and decide I'm going to go and encourage that person because I think they need encouragement. Um, but most of the time I seem to be able to do it kind of naturally. And one of the reasons actually I did that is because I didn't get much of it when I was younger. So I kind of, um, and because one of my love languages is, is encouragement. So um, I've just developed that over time. And, it, and we all can, it's, it's easy to do if you're intentional about it. Yes. And it actually makes you feel better because you've inputted into somebody's life something really positive. Um, when you've left a, a, a good, a, neg a positive legacy in their life. Yes, and that's an awesome thing. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's really good. So you know, uh, we had we had talked about. I think we talked a little bit about this now, but um, you know, where you shared a story from your own life of when you've had an epiphany in discovering your own identity. Um, because of, you know, uh, the encouragement you've had, too. Um, do you want to just expand on that? I think there's a, you kind of uh, had a little story about um, where you had a new understanding when you watched a movie, The Matrix. Oh, yeah, well, I think I've that before. Um, the Neo thing. Um, yeah, oh, okay, yeah. Um, Neo discovering his identity. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, because um, I thought that's what you were asking me about before. Oh, um, okay. No, that's okay. That's good. Um, so, yeah, just I had that moment where, that epiphany where Luc Fenier has in The Matrix. Oh, okay, yeah. And that's when I kind of realized who I was meant to be and all that encouragement kind of, you know, came to the surface and it kind of was affirmed. Yeah. Confirmed, you know. Yeah. Yes. And that truth that had been spoken to me, which I only kind of thought in my head before then, you know, I wasn't 100% convinced I was a writer or I was an author or I, or I could, or that that's what God really wanted me to do. Yeah. Uh, there was a moment where I, um, where that shifted. Yeah. It was a, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't something that I did intent, like deliberately, it just happened. And it was out, it's, in a sense, it was out of my control. It was, it was when I entered into my calling. Yeah. Which is, I mean, that's that's well, wonderful. Put it into practice. Yeah. Um, which is why it's important in, in encouraging people. We don't just say things that we actually take a chance on people. Yeah. Uh, like for example, Jeff. The example, another example I didn't use before. Jeff Jeff Goins, um, the guy who runs the Tribe Writers Course. Um, I got to know him about a year before the Tribe Writers Course, and I asked him to guest post, thinking that. I wouldn't get to guest post on his blog. And it was a much bigger blog than mine, and it's still a much bigger blog than mine. Um, and I thought, well, yeah, you know, I might as well ask, you know. And he said yes. And oh, that's so great. And so, and and he didn't have to do that. And that's a that was a big that's a risk for him. You know, he has a lot of readers, and you know, and I wasn't like a major blogger um, like he is. Um, certainly not. It's not not at the time, and I wasn't. What I haven't, I didn't have the following that I have now, and so he took a risk on me, and he believed in me, and that act of faith was a big step forward for me, uh, and gave me a lot of confidence in myself. Yes. So encouragement isn't just just the affirming words, although it can just be the affirming words. It's also an act. It's in, it's 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 an act of faith in somebody, believing in somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, my dad didn't just say I was good at writing, he actually asked me with something, you know, so yeah. examples of encouragement in life are where people haven't, they've actually done something, they've actually taken a chance on me, now we can't do that all the time, but we should be willing to do that, yes, we really want to give people confidence in themselves and who we can be, we need to be willing to take a risk on them ourselves, 
once in a while. Yeah. Uh, no, that's that's really good. It's like our our actions then sort of follow our words, right? Which is important. You're not just saying it, but you're actually the actions are showing that yeah. you're wanting to encourage them. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. So you can always say nice affirming words to people, you know, and it's kind of, you know, it doesn't, and but it, it really it really means something when we actually are willing to take a risk on them. Yeah. Believe in them and say you can do this. Yes. No, yeah. that's that's really good. I, actually, my pastor, um, when I first joined the church, um, he was different from any other pastor that I've had because when I get, I had some ideas about things we could do, and um, and he didn't, because you know, a lot of pastors just thought, oh, they do it all for you, you know, like yeah, <laughs> some ideas, and then oh, the pastor does it, that's their job. But my pastor didn't do that. He said, he just said, what are you doing about it, you know, as in. It's your responsibility. You yeah, know. that's and good. I, I want you to, to, I want you to do this. Yeah, there's like, and, and that's an act. Of, that was an act of, not only it was a kick up the backside for me, <laughs> but it, <laughs> that was sort of faith in me as well. It was like saying, I believe you can do this. So go and do it. Yeah, that's and good. We need, and we need to, we need that. Yeah, we do. We need that. We need people like that in our lives. That's good. Yes, we do. Yeah. So, um, you have talked about, uh, you know, so along with um, people encouraging us, we need to be able to receive it too, what they're saying. We need to be able to receive it that it's the truth. Um, yes. Sometimes we subconsciously dismiss encouraging words uh, because mm -hmm. deep down inside, we don't really believe it could be true. And in your book, you call this self-discouragement or fake humility could you could you explain the difference between the two and and why that you know either one would be harmful to us and and how would we stop you know blocking the good words from coming into our lives yeah okay i i would say there's two types of fake humility there's the fake humility where actually you're just really cocky and you got you're overconfident and you're just saying and you kind of put stuff down saying, oh, no, not really, not me, no, and of course not me, you know, but actually you're just kind of boosting your own ego and you're taking it in and just, like, thinking you're better than everybody else. Yeah. That's, that's the worst kind of fake humility. Yeah. Um, well, that's not what I'm talking about. Um, the fake humility I'm talking about here is actually not believing what anybody says about you. And, and you know, you dismiss it, you put it down, you kind of take away any power that it had because you don't believe it yeah not because you're humble not because you not because you have a servant heart because you genuinely don't believe it and I've done that I've done that a lot I, I still struggle with it um, self-discouragement it's almost two sides of the same coin because self-discouragement is putting yourself down and taking any failure and kind of amplifying it and punishing yourself for things. Yeah. Mm. Well, any setback, any negative stuff, it's always your fault. Um, mm -hmm. Your like, your rubbish, you know. And you just take anything to pick, to pick any any situation that happens and try and find the negative almost and put yourself down. You don't really believe anything good about yourself. I really, I've really struggled with this. I still struggle with it now, and um, not as much as I used to. Um, I've learned how to receive encouragement more, you know, and instead of kind of trying to put down, try to say thank you instead. Yes. Just to because I know that the people who are saying it are not, uh, they're not just saying it for the show, they're saying it because they mean it. And, because yeah. they and I have to receive that. And you have to have a filter as well so that I don't. Yeah, so that I don't get cocky or arrogant or think better than anybody else. Yeah. But so I can also receive that and say, well, you've achieved something and that's a good thing and take confidence from that. But also, also you've got to remember that you've always got something to learn. Like, I mean, I think part of the secret of humility is recognising that you never have all the answers. Yes, that's true. <laughs> and the, yeah. how, no matter how much you know, how, how, no matter how much you achieve, there's always something new to learn. Yeah. There's, always, there's always you're still going to make mistakes. Um, you're not perfect, 
and you're not better than everybody else. No. And start, even, start knowing the truth about yourself and knowing that your value doesn't come from what you achieve, it comes from just that you're, you're, you're created by God in the image of God mm-hmm. and that you have infinite value and worth to Him. Well, what you've ever done before you were... You were You know, and if again, it comes back to that. You know, if you believe that, then everything else kind of follows on from that. But obviously, most of us don't kind of not grow up in a home where that's a fair. Yeah. Uh, and even if we do, we always encounter disruption and brokenness and pain in our lives. So, we kind of have to. So, it's, so it doesn't always work out as we as we'd like it. Yeah. Um, I think the key to discovering our identity, and the key to having, to remain humble and, to, but also being confident, is to, is to have your identity grounded in Jesus. Yes. You know, in to what He says about us. You know. Yeah. No, and that's so true. Yeah. Um, well, and you know, just knowing our identity, and um, you know, just knowing what God says about us. Is, is like water to a plant in a way, just like encouragement helps us grow, just knowing that helps us grow, right? And gives yeah. us the freedom, right? Yeah, I mean, the cover pictures of both books have got a, uh, they've both got plants being watered. I love uh, that. Uh, I did that deliberately because I thought it was a good metaphor. Yeah. It is a good metaphor, yes. Yeah. No, that's powerful. So, you do talk in your book, you talk about one definition of encouragement. Now, I guess we're coming to that question, you kind of hinted at it, but is to spur one another on. Mm. So, so how how would you define this? Like, how would you define spurring one another on? And and how do you think this type of encouragement helps people grow and change? And and maybe you know, if you have an example that you could share too, that would be great. Yeah. Um, well, the word, the phrase "spurring each other on," it comes from horses. Yeah. Uh, basically, what jockeys do when they ride a horse is they use spurs every so often to get them to go faster. And these spurs, they cause a little bit of pain, which doesn't last very long, but they get the horse to go faster. Um, it's what the horse needs to go faster, mm-hmm. and that's yeah. where this comes from. Um, so when I'm talking about encouragement to spur each other on, I'm talking about saying something that is true yeah. but that is not easy to say and not easy to hear saying something that somebody needs to hear but maybe they don't really want to hear Yeah. say somebody's got an addiction for example and you know that and they know they've got a problem and you know they've got a problem and you're, you know, I mean it only works if you're somebody if, if you have a close relationship with this yeah. person you can't just do this with somebody you don't know Yeah. so let's just, you know, let's just say that to start with but you go to this person you, you, because you care about them. Yes. Yeah. You want the best for them, and you know that they can be something better than they are, um, and th- you know that this is not good for them. So you go and tell them. You say, you know, you're better. You, you don't criticize them. You don't put them down. You don't make them feel like they're like like this this big. You know. Yeah. You you, you affirm them. You you tell them you tell them that they have that they're better than what they're doing. You know that they're worth more than the way they're treating themselves. Yeah. They're capable of something better than that. You know. Um, and it has to leave people feeling positive. It can't... It's not going to... If you, if you say something to somebody and they're left feeling negative about themselves, it's, it's not going to have any impact. Yeah. If it's, but it ha- but that it has to be the truth at the same time. You know, so you've got to... It's like the truth in love. Yes. That's the best... That is the definition of truth in love for me is saying something that somebody needs to hear that maybe isn't what they want to hear but is what but what they need to hear. Yes. Telling them the truth about themselves, whether they like it or not. You know. And sometimes actually that is um, uh, telling somebody who thinks that they're rubbish and doesn't believe in themselves that they that actually they're not rubbish and that they that they have that they're gifted and that they're talented and that they should be doing this. Yes. You know. And they need to stop believing these stupid lies about themselves. That can be difficult to hear. Yeah. I've had to hear that. Yeah. Well, I got it for once. And, um, and God had been telling me for ages that, you know, you're worth 
everything to me. You know, you don't think you're worth anything to yourself, but you're worth everything to me. And then one day it was like, okay, enough. When are you going to start? When are you going to believe me? When are you going to start believing me about what I say about you? You know, yeah. I've said this so many times and you don't listen, you don't believe me. When, why, when are you going to believe me? When are you going to believe the truth about yourself? Yeah, that's really good, James. That's really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't always happen but you know I've got friends who will say stuff like that to me I've got friends who will tell me the truth they won't tell me what I need what I want to hear they'll tell me what I need to hear uh-huh. yeah. and we all need friends like that but I've had to, I've had to do that with a friend of mine who's had problems with addictions I've had to sit them down and tell them you're better than this you know that you're doing this. Why are you doing that? You're, you're worth more than that. And we we care about you. We love you. We want the best for you. You know. Be this instead. Because you can be that. Uh-huh. And it made a difference to him. You know, it did. Um, he sorted him sorted himself out. And it's um That's really good. That's really good. And that's that's encouragement. Uh-huh. And people encouragement but it is it's just as much encouragement as saying something that makes somebody feel better about themselves you know um, that's why encouragement is so much broader than people think it is and why it's so important yeah um, it, because it because it covers this area as well um, it's not just the um, the nice stuff which makes you which makes you feel better yes no I think that's very helpful for you know all of us listening James because um, I think you've put a bigger picture on what encouragement is instead of just saying all these nice words it's a bigger picture you know um, it's coming into someone's life you know a close friend and talking to them about something they need to hear might not want to hear but doing it still in a loving way right and so that's yeah. that's really good um, so I you know uh, I just I thank you for writing this awesome book uh, and just all of the Yes. Oh, yes. Well, my pleasure. It was really good. Um, uh, you know, it just, I think it helped us, all of us who listened to you today, helped us to realize how important encouragement is in our own lives and the, how important it is to give to others. Um, mm. So that, you know, that's, that's really, really great. Um, so, mm. you know, what's, what's the next part, you know, of your story? What other projects are you working on in the near future? Or the next few years that you can share, <laughs> you know, I'm sure you got stuff in your mind that you don't, you know. But just what you can share, that'd be great. Oh uh, yeah, well, um, I'm currently working on a book about grace, and it's my first full-length book. Um, it has a provisional title, but I'm not going to say it because I'm not, I haven't confirmed that yet. But it's on the subject of grace, and I'm hoping to publish it um, June, July, 2014. Um, probably myself, probably through Amazon Direct Publishing, but you know, I don't. I'm not 100% sure of everything yet. But um, yeah, so that'll be happening, and there'll be more information about that on my blog, um, jamesprescott.co.uk. Um, and if you sign up for regular updates, you'll probably get that information before other people will get it. So um, yes. yeah, that's that's happening. Um, I have a lot of ideas um, for other books as well and um, if you topics like sabbath and um death and other things you know i've got lots of and i've got i've even got a few ideas for fiction books as well and um i'm thinking about podcasting there might be something happening with that i don't know um i'm still i'm currently kind of planning out my year in terms of what i'm going to do and what i want to achieve and what i'm going to be blogging about i'm probably going to be blogging a bit about courage this year about grace, obviously, um, and some stuff on the subjects that I've been blogging about recently, which is the myth of normal, which might be one of my books as well. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot going on, and I'm quite excited by it. Yeah. Oh, that's terrific, James. It's not, yes, you've got a lot of, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, different topics that you've, you know, uh, that's sort of a part of your impacted your story, right, which you, 
uh, I just I think stories like uh, you know stuff like on grace and the Sabbath and and those types of things even stories on death which a lot of us don't like to talk about but mm -hmm. I, I think that would give us a new understanding because you've gone through that right so yes yes I lost um, the people who don't know I, uh, my mum passed away um, April 2000 so yes. I've been through that and I was only 23 um, yeah that's so, hard and so so that was a very very difficult experience as you can imagine yes. um, I've kind of gone through that now I'm at the other side as it were um, so, but I just think, I mean, death and grief, I mean, grief, in a sense, death is, death is linked to grief, but it's also, it's also a big subject in itself. Yes. And it's something that, it's funny because there's hardly any books about it, and yet it's something that every single person will do, um, which is very strange. Um, I, I think I always thought that was strange, and I've always been fascinated by the subject as well. Um, so that'll be something for the future definitely and the sabbath thing yeah very very i'm very interested in that because i'm interested in the rhythms of our lives and how we order our lives and um the importance of and the store i'm interested I'm really the whole i mean if you look at all the ideas um it's really about what it means to be human and what it means to be human in the way that god created us to be human and uh -huh. You know, if you look at the subjects that I'm writing about, um, encouragement and grace and Sabbath and um, the myth, you know, the kind of the myth of the normal, which is about the stories that culture tells us about what we're meant to live, uh, as opposed to the stories that we actually were meant to live, which are, you know, we each have an individual story that we are meant to live. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's not; it shouldn't be a story that culture tells us. And yes. Actually, something I've been thinking about recently is um, the the whole concept that actually we all think that we're weird and everybody else is normal. But yeah. actually, there's no such thing as normal. We're all kind of weird because we're all we're all different. Every single person is different. They have a unique story. They have a unique set of experiences and, uh, and character traits and gifts which make them who they are and we're all different and we all have our own individual story to tell which is uniquely ours and we shouldn't try and follow these stories that culture tells us you know about what it what we're meant to do like we're meant to get the job and you know meant to buy the house and meant to have the family and meant to retire at 65 and earn x amount of money and go and live in the country or something you know and, and these this, and this is like the story that we get sold mm -hmm. That, that actually is, you know, that some of those things are good in themselves, but we don't have to live according to them. Yeah. You know, we have our own story to live, and that's what I'm interested in. Um, and that obviously talks about Sabbath and about rhythms of how we live that life. And, um, and obviously death as well. You know? The guy. Um, because obviously family members die eventually, and we have, I mm. we have, I just, I just think it's important that we find out what it, what God made us to be human, like how God made us to be, and that's really what I've, I've always been interested in. Yeah. So exploring. No, that's that's really great. Well, James, thank thank you so much for just sharing all these great nuggets um, about encouragement and about uh, you know just stuff you're kind of thinking about and just wisdom nuggets. Really, uh, it's been so for all of us just such a big help. I think it's given us a new perspective, a bigger mm -hmm. a bigger picture. Maybe is a good way to to think of it on encouragement. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, I just appreciate that. <laughs> Thanks. That's great. Yeah, it's yeah. been really good to talk to you, actually. And it's it's good, like, you know, that how this has been kind of more of a friendly discussion rather than just a formal interview because it, I think a lot of stuff's come out that we, you know, more than we'd originally talked about, which I think will bless a lot of people. So that's... Um, yes. Well, anyway, so that's, yeah, that's, that's really cool. Yes. Well, I'll just... Uh just really appreciate you on here. Um, so if people want to get your uh, your 
manifesto, five steps to encouragement. Yes, uh, yes. There's there's the five steps to encouragement book, um, and there's also reflections on encouragement, which where I um, take the concepts from the from the first book, and I've created some reflections um, using um, verses from scripture and and quotes from kind of famous wise people about encouragement. Um, and I've written a reflection on those on those quotes, um, and those can be done over. There's five of them, and they can be done over five weeks, five days, five months. Um, you know, and um, they go alongside to some of the stuff that I read in the book. So I write written about in the book. So um, yeah, I'm just I I think those two go together really well, and um, you can get them obviously together. Um, I'd read the book. I would recommend reading the book first. I mean, it's only eight thousand words, so it's not that long. Um, you can probably read both of them in about an hour, um, or probably less than that. But I mean, although I would recommend the, the reflection, do them over a few weeks or a few days, do them one at a time because that's how they're meant to be read and uh, the reflections. So, um, oh, yeah, that's really good. I think that's going to be helpful for you know a lot of us. Well, everybody who would who would get it, it would just be helpful. Yeah. So. Yeah, you can get those at jamesprescott.co.uk. Um, that's um, J A M E S P R E S C O W T dot co dot uk. Um, yeah. And then you can get those books and some other stuff sent to you for free, and um, get my regular blog updates as well. Okay, and then they'll also, if they sign up, they'll also know when your book is coming out. Yes, they will. Then. You'll probably, you'll probably hear about that um, more in advance than, you, than other people would have done. And there, there may even be an opportunity to uh, review it and stuff like that, you know, if you're a subscriber. So, um, yeah. Okay, that's really good. Well, thanks so much, James. It's been okay. so good to talk to you. Yeah, you too. It's been great chatting. <laughs>